Hi everybody, Professor Gassimi here, and in this component of the lecture we're going to be speaking about how the internet works. I think the easiest way for you to conceptually understand how the internet works is for us to start by building the simplest possible network and trying to grow that network, and it will hint at the kinds of complexities that exist when growing large-scale networks, which is what the internet is, um, and we'll give you an intuition sort of behind the various components. So let's start with the simplest possible network. We have two machines, A and B, and we'd like to exchange information between them. So one way we can do that is we can hook a cable between them, an ethernet cable as an example. And after we have a cable connecting them, what we would need is some uh, agreed upon way to, to send the information across that cable, right? So we need a way to turn the digital signals in, in machine A into an analog signal that moves across that cable to B, and then a way for B to translate that analog signal back into the digital signal so it understands what A was sending along. If we did that, we now have a network that allows A and B to communicate. Okay, and if that process worked and it worked well, we might be interested very quickly in adding new machines to our network, right? Instead of A and B, we might, might want A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J to become part of this great network. And we might initially and very naively uh, take a cable and connect each device to every other device so that they can each exchange information. And that would be great because there's a direct means of communication between each of the devices now, but it'd be not so great because we would need tons of cables, right? We may not even have enough ethernet ports on the individual machines to uh, plug in and even accommodate all these cables as the size of that network grows. It already looks like a beast, as you can see, when we've got a very small number of machines, right? So to simplify this network, um, one thing you could do is, is take another computer of some kind and have it sit in the middle of the whole set that you want to make connections between. So instead of having a connection between A and all the other nodes, you have A connect to a central machine. Uh, you have D connect to a central machine and so on. Now, what is the point of that central machine? Well, it's to basically route information from one node to the other. And so what you might do is you might call it a router, right? Because that's what it's doing. It's routing information from one machine to the other. Okay, and this obviously would have the great advantage of reducing the number of cables you'd need uh, to, to connect any of the devices here from 10 to only one, right? Everybody goes to the router and then the router takes care of the transmission. What does this come at the cost at? Well, if you have a direct line of communication, that's obviously going to be a little bit faster than if you have to go through a middleman of some kind, right? So that's the trade-off. Now, if you have devices like, for example, nodes A through E connected to a router um, and you wanted to send information to another network of some kind. Let's say in our class, we had built a network of computers we had connected with a router, and you know some other class had another uh, network of computers they, they had connected. Well, we could just connect the routers together, right? And now uh, we can send information from A to our router, from our router to their router, and then to whichever the nodes on the other side needed to collect that information, and we'd be good to go. But then we can also connect routers to routers to routers, and we can scale this infinitely in a tree structure so that ultimately the goal is we minimize that number of cables needed to transmit information from any one computer in this network to any other computer in this network. And uh, what you're seeing here is part of the design philosophy for how these, these networks that are attached or uh, connected to the internet end up working. Now, if we were building uh, these networks from scratch in our class, in other classes at MSU, um, at some point we might decide that uh, managing the cables and even between the routers is getting sort of annoying because what do we do if we want to send information to somebody who's really, really far away? Well, we'd have to get a huge cable, right? Where could we find some huge cables, right? If only there were some huge cables that were just strewn about our cities that we could piggyback on so that we could send this information. Oh, that's what phone lines are, right? Phone lines are these giant cables that run all over the place and basically touch everywhere. We could use the phone lines uh, as long as we had kind of a, a telecom friendly format 
of the signals that we wanted to send, those analog signals, we could now use the telephone lines to send information from one of our routers to some other router so that we could transmit information from nodes in our network to nodes in some other network. And that is, that is effectively how the internet works, right? The device that's used to take the information from your router and turn it into that telecom friendly format so that it doesn't violate any of the uh, assumptions or, or necessities of uh, sending information along a telephone line is what a modem is, okay? Now, to send the message, the modem connects to the telecom system managed by a internet service provider. So here we have our router here at the top, connects to a modem, and uh, the modem has some connection to the internet service provider, which are the folks who um, ultimately take responsibility then through their network of passing it to another modem, which translates it back into a, a, a format that it can be received by the router, which is then ultimately passed to some nodes very, very far away. And in this way, we've now been able to, to scale very organically from a very simple network that was connecting machines by, inter, uh, by Ethernet to machines that can sub transmit data to locations that are very, very far away. Okay, so the conclusion here is that um, computing devices are connected with routers to create networks and that networks are interconnected via internet service provider and that all the internet is is a public network of computing devices. Okay, It's all those devices that are hooked together through all those cables all following similar rules of communication so that they can send and receive information to each other using that physical infrastructure.